Hey everyone, I'm Dr. Ben. As always, welcome to the doctor's office. This is a channel where I talk about health information and spreading health awareness. In this episode, we're gonna be talking about COVID and how it spreads. Again, I'm Dr. Ben. I'm a practicing emergency physician here in the Midwest, United States. I have a passion for healthcare, and this video is one part of a series that I'm doing on COVID. And specifically today, we're gonna to be talking about how COVID spreads and how to prevent that spread. So I'm gonna do this in a question answer format. I think that's most useful because it, as a practicing physician, I most commonly get hit with these common questions. Before we begin, I want to again reiterate that everything I discuss today is an area of ongoing research. Just know that everything I talk about is subject to change. So how does it spread? There's been a lot of proposed ways of how COVID-19 spreads, but it's universally recognized that it spreads through droplets primarily. Droplets just means droplets as we speak and breathe come out of our nose and our mouth. And we're talking about pretty small uh, droplets of liquid, um, very difficult to even see with the human eye. But those droplets carry into the wind, carry into the air, and start to spread as we breathe and we talk. That's this whole idea behind masks and how instrumental they are in helping prevent the spread of COVID. There is currently some thought that COVID is aerosolized as well. The difference between aerosol and droplets are droplets are larger particles. Aerosol just means that it is spread through minusculely small droplets in what we breathe and uh, breathe out particularly. Aerosols remain in the air for a much longer period of time and can spread much further distances. Now this is an ongoing area of research. People still have not fully decided whether or not there is a firm connection between aerosolized transmission and infection of the virus or whether it's purely a droplet method. But currently world governments and the CDC here in the United States are firmly going on that the primary method of spread is droplet, which is why mask wearing is so instrumental in preventing spread. Can I spread the virus if I don't have symptoms? The answer is yes. However, this is still an area of active investigation. There's one study out of China right now that concluded that around two and a half days prior to you first getting a symptom, meaning you get cough, fever, congestion, body aches, that two and a half days is when you could start spreading the virus. We do know that you are most infectious early in the course of the disease, primarily two to three days after you start showing symptoms. Early in disease, that's when the viral levels and your secretions are the highest. So you're most infectious at that point. We're talking two to three days after you start showing symptoms. And that's what partly why COVID is such a dangerous infection is there is this prolonged period of several days before you start feeling ill at all where you're actively spreading viral particles in the air you breathe out. And that again is why social distancing and mask wearing are, and hand washing are such vitally important things and tools for not only yourself, but for everyone to be practicing right now. Next question, if I am infected, how long am I infected for? That's another great question. Current evidence seems to show that after you start showing symptoms, that you are infectious for 10 days after that start of symptom onset. So in other words, if today I developed a headache, cough, cold, congestion, I got tested and it was, and it was COVID, for 10 days after today, I am infectious, meaning I can actively spread that virus through my secretions when I talk, when I breathe, when I cough, being close to other individuals. That is the, the real danger zone. That 10 day period after the symptom onset, as well as several days prior to you starting to have symptoms. Now that changes if you are immunosuppressed. Immunosuppression means if you have a weakened immune system. Some people are immunosuppressed due to things like cancer, medications that they're on, blood diseases. Some people congenitally have weak immune systems. Some people take medications for other conditions that cause them to have weakened immune systems. Um, steroid use is, is a common one. People on chronic prednisone for COPD or asthma or a host of other conditions. Now, all, also caveats that go with the 10 day infectious period or 20 days if you're immunosuppressed is for some people it takes them longer to fight the virus so the cdc currently throws in two other caveats one if you're continuing to have fevers 
you are still considered infectious, and two, you need to have an improving clinical trajectory, meaning if on day 12, you're getting worse than you were on day 11 and worse than you were on day 10, you're still infectious. So then the question becomes, let's say it's 15 days from the point in which I was tested, and I get another test, and it's positive, but I feel okay. Am I infectious? That is a very gray question that no one has a good answer for. Most sources say no, as long as you, again, feel totally back to normal, aren't having fevers, have been improving, and again, it's been over 10 days since your symptom onset. The reason we think that happens is you have residual viral particles in your nose and in your mouth that are still able to be detected by our sensitive testing. So it just means that we're picking up pieces of virus in your nose. That doesn't necessarily mean those viruses are active or it's enough to get someone infectious. It still means though that potentially you could but again, we don't have a great answer for it. I will tell you that any time in the next, I would say month after you've been infected with COVID, you should be very careful about going into large social gatherings, always wearing a mask, and trying to distance yourself from others as much as you can. All right, next, what is the incubation period of COVID? Incubation period is a fancy way of saying, how long does it take from me being exposed to the virus for it to grow enough to where I can infect others or start showing symptoms myself. Currently, we think that incubation period is anywhere from two days to 14 days. And that depends a large part on how much virus you've been infected with and your overall health yourself. Oftentimes people ask, can the virus be spread through X, Y, or Z, blood, urine, feces, all of that. So I'm gonna go through that real quick for you. Food. There's no current evidence that shows that you can easily pick up the virus through food, mosquitoes, or ticks. There is currently no evidence that mosquitoes or ticks spread COVID. Drinking water. There has never been any detected COVID in properly cleaned and sanitized and filtered drinking water. Hot tubs, pools. There's currently no evidence that COVID has ever been transmitted through a pool or a hot tub. And I would think that the chemicals like chlorine or bromine in hot tubs and pools do a pretty decent job of killing the virus. Feces. As gross as it sounds, unfortunately, yes, the virus does live in feces. Now, there's never been a report of anyone picking up through feces. As you can imagine, most people try not to get feces in their mouths, as gross as that sounds. But it does live in feces and has been found in feces. So, potentially, yes. Sex. Yes, but not in the way that you would expect. We've never had any evidence that sex itself has spread COVID through this, the spreading of genital fluids and so on. However, if you're having sex, your faces are pretty close to each other. That very much is a likely spreader of COVID. Blood. The coronavirus has been detected in blood. Now, the chance of you getting that through blood, extremely low. The amount of virus that's been picked up in blood has been pretty minuscule. There's never been a known transmission of coronavirus through blood at this point cuts like scrapes on your arms or your hands. Again, there's never been any evidence that if you get a cut on your hand and someone were to breathe onto that cut that you would get the coronavirus. That's never been shown. What are the best ways to prevent spreading COVID? And this is the most important question I'm gonna go over today because this is a group endeavor to stop the spread of COVID-19. Again, this virus is primarily spread through respiratory droplets. So anything that can prevent the spread of droplets from an infected person's mouth or nose getting somewhere near your mouth or nose is the best way to prevent this. Outside of your home, social distance, stay six feet away from strangers at all times if you're able to, cover your face with a mask, demand that other people wear masks around you too. This is an important thing that we need to culturally get behind right now is that mask wearing saves lives and we need all need to stand behind that. And remember, the virus can spread when you are not showing symptoms. That has been shown time and time again. And remember also that some people out there have weakened immune systems and are much more easily able to pick up this virus and get critically ill. In addition to wearing a mask, you should be covering your coughs and your sneezes at all times. One of the worst ways you can do that is by doing this. The best way you could do it is by sneezing or coughing into your elbow that helps drastically keep that virus away from being aerosolized in droplet form and getting other people sick. 
When you wash your hands, wash for at least 20 seconds. And if you're using hand sanitizer, use a hand sanitizer that contains at least 60% alcohol. Clean and disinfect surfaces that you frequently touch, doorknobs, cabinets, countertops, desks, keyboards, mouses, anything that you're commonly putting your hands around or particularly anything where another person could put their hands on it. When you're using tissues, throw them immediately in the trash. Do not leave them lying around, particularly if you're in public. And finally, if you're feeling ill, stay home. Do not go out in public. Get a COVID-19 test. If you are COVID-19 positive, that starts an immediate 10-day quarantine period at home, 20 days if you're immunosuppressed, as I discussed earlier. COVID-19 is not the common cold. It is much worse than that, and you should start taking it seriously because your life and other people's lives depend on it. So that was a brief overview of how the COVID-19 virus has been thought to spread currently using the best evidence that I can find at this moment. Again, this is part of an ongoing series about COVID-19. Stay tuned for further episodes where I go over other aspects of COVID. Subscribe and like if you haven't already. That helps spread my channel both in YouTube's algorithm and helps get more information like this to people who need to hear it. Thanks, and as always, stay happy, healthy, informed, and empowered.